<coughs> Hello, my dears. Very good morning to all. So, what we studied in the last class? I think we studied about the Western bits, right? And uh, uh, the balancing equation also. How can we find the unknown resistance using the Western bits that we found, right? So today, so that's a, that uh, Kelvin's double bridge, right? So that is not at all that much important for the examination point of view. That's not that much important, my dears. So I'm skipping that, no? It is not needed. The same thing is there. The opposite resistance will be same. The product of the impedance of the opposite resistance will be same. That principle you can apply for all bridges in order to get the balancing condition. Suppose you forgot the balancing condition. The bal not balancing condition, you forgot the value of unknown resistance, then you can easily multiply the opposite branches, impedances, you will get the what? Uh, the unknown resistance value. So that is that much easy. So no problem there. So today we are going to discuss about <coughs> measurement of self-inductance. Measurement of self inductance so in which we have to study two three bridges very very important bridges first one maxwell's bridge so it is used for measuring the self inductance okay so i will draw the figure so for any bridge this is the very easiest the trick right Draw this figure, my dears. Draw this figure. So this bridge contains again four amps my dears four amps so i will tell you the measurement of self inductance means it is comes under the category of ac bridges right it comes under the category of ac bridges so ac bridges means of course the applied applied voltage will be ac and in dc bridges we discussed two dc bridges but western bridge and kelvin trouble bridge so in which we are used we were used to what there is a galvanometer for sensing the small current but in the case of ac bridges since the term containing the frequency and all we are not using galvanometers there we are using detectors so instead of galvanometer there are detectors in what uh, ac bridges detectors may be anything it may be microphone sorry yes it may be a vibrating galvanometer may be a tuned, tuned amplifier tuned amplifier or it may be a uh, headphone our headphone it may be our headphone see in the laboratory and all did you remember that you wear you wore a headphone and you measure the what inductance and all huh? you remember that right so normally we are using a headphone as a detector so the, that sound itself, you know, sound change and all, we will 
learn and we will find the what unknown detectors there so this is the detector so any one of these this may be act as the detector and see this is our <coughs> unknown parameter see in the universe everything is not made of as ideal thing right that means suppose you are taking inductance it contains a resistance suppose you take an inductance it contains a resistance and capacitance so everything electrically we will will not consider it is a pure inductor pure capacitor pure resistor it will be always a combination of these three so this is nothing but we have to measure the inductance by here so you take a wire and we have to measure the inductance but alone the inductor it is impossible alone inductance it is impossible but it will be a combination of inductance and the resistance will be there which means none of the thing in the universe it is not purely resistor inductor capacitor so we have to take a wire we place it here that wires inductance we have to measure but we know that practically it contains a small amount of resistance also so that unknown resistance is represented by rx and unknown inductance is represented by lx so before that we are going to the derivation we have to know certain things my dear so first of all suppose r and l are in series then what will be z what will be z z will be equal to what this is l and this is r my dear so z will be r plus j into l omega is it correct suppose l and r are in parallel this is l and r are in parallel then we can't call it as z we call it as y y is nothing but y1 plus y2 y1 is the is the admittance followed by this l path and y2 is the admittance followed by this second path so it will be 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 y is nothing but 1 by z so it is equal to 1 by z1 z1 is nothing but what j into l omega correct j into l omega is the z1 okay and plus 1 by z2 is nothing but 1 by r2 so this thing you have to note so this is 1 by z so from this you have to find the z value and again suppose you have suppose you have r and c is in series then what will be its z z will be r minus j x c x c is nothing but omega c so r minus j divided by omega c will be its impedance and suppose r and c are in parallel this is r and c then you can't go for z you can go for y is equal to y1 plus y2 and y1 is equal to 1 by z1 and y2 is equal to 1 by z2 and 1 by z1 means 1 by r plus 1 by z2 means minus j divided by omega c so this is 1 by z2 z2 is equal to minus j divided by omega c z1 is equal to what 1 by i mean simply r so in that way you have to calculate the rc combination it may be applicable to every r and c combination so remember this okay i think some of you definitely know this so just for your information i told so again under balanced condition again under balanced condition what will be the detector current or the detector sound will become suppose you are using a headphone so the detector sound will become zero how can we make the balancing condition means we have to we have to vary the resistance r3 we have to vary the resistance r3 so that we can make the balancing condition here so at that balancing condition what happens means my dear the uh, not r3 my dear this is c1 we have to vary c1 we have to vary c1 okay so by varying the c1 we have to make the detector output or the detector current will keep become zero so detector current in the sense suppose we are using a headphone means its sound become null suppose your tuned amplifier means its output will become zero tuned amplifier means no, tuned amplifier means output become zero okay so any anyway so normally we are using a headphone so it's 
there is no sound producer that is the null condition or balanced condition so under balanced condition my dears what what i already told you the opposite branch impedance the product of the opposite branch impedance will be same so i can say that under balanced condition r2 r3 will be equal to what let be z1 so total this impedance will be let be masked as z1 and this impedance be i marked as z2 so let be what my dear so r1 r2 r3 let be z4 okay let be z4 for the easiness so r2 r3 is equal to z1 and z4 so this will be the balancing condition so let's see what is z1 and z4 so what is that let's see what is z1 z1 is nothing but this impedance since this is in parallel condition what will be the impedance here r1 into minus j divided by omega c c1 correct divided by r1 minus j divided by omega c1 correct this is z1 am i correct the product right this is in parallel so the product divided by the summation will give you, give you the value of impedance so r1 into minus j divided by omega c1 is the z2 the, i mean uh, the impedance of the capacitance so it will be r1 into minus j omega c1 divided by r1 minus j omega divided by c1 that is the z1 then what is z2 made z4 what is z4 z4 is nothing but what is that rx plus j into omega lx rx plus j into omega lx if you substitute this in this equation and and substitute this in equation number 1 and equating real and imaginary part equating real and imaginary part you will get rx equation and you will get lx equation where rx is nothing but my dear r2 r3 divided by r1 and this is nothing but r2 r3 into c1 so these two equation are this is the important fact here. so nothing you have to study rather than this two equation nothing you have to study rather than this two equation so r2 r3 divided by r1 is the rx and r2 r3 into c1 is the value of the unknown inductance so just in, in examination no one will uh, will be will ask you what is the equivalent circuit and all okay what is the proof and all no one will ask you but you have to know the rx and the lx values so for our unlock no for our unlock maybe this type of question may be asked normally this is not asked actually so regarding bridges for each bridge they they mention this bridge is for that this bridge is for that that's all but not in deep what is the unknown inductance and the unknown resistance type normally it is not seen very rarely seen actually so anyhow we have to study okay so you just remember the circuit diagram just a circuit diagram you have are a picture okay this and this r1 c1 parallel r2 r3 rx lx just and you have to learn rx and lx equation also rx and lx equation you have to learn if there is no shortcut or there is no trick to learn i mean remember this r2 r3 by r1 and r2 r3 c1 and all i tried a lot uh, to find a trick in which trick you can apply for easily remember that rx and lx but i failed i didn't find any so if you find any you can mention in the comment section so that everyone will be used you, you utilize right everyone will be utilized so that is the concept of what <coughs> maxwell bridge and one more thing my dear the maxwell bridge is used to maxwell bridge is used to find self inductance of coil having low q factor that is in this in the range of 1 to 10 so this is very important so maxwell bridge is used to find the uh, inductance mean self inductance of the coil which having low q factor 
okay so that is all about the maxwell bridge so maxwell bridge is nothing but it is a bridge used to find the unknown inductance that is the mutual self inductance okay not the mutual inductance not the mutual inductance this is used for find the self inductance is it clear my dears so you have to remember this equation only okay so next bridge is hayes bridge hayes bridge Okay. Okay. So this is the circuit diagram for the Hayes bridge, my dears. So Hayes bridge is used to find self-inductance of coil having high q factor which is in the range of 1 to 100 my dears 1 to 100. this is the important thing here Hayes bridge is used to find the highest i mean high q factor values high q factor uh, coils okay normally just you have to remember the circuit diagram bridges just remember this name and there is an and the SN bridge. No need to uh, remember the even circuit diagram also. Just remember the, this thing. Use it to find self inductance of coil or find large range of large range of self inductance of coil that's all so in maxwell bridge we simply find the self inductance of coil having very low q factor hayes bridge gives the value of self inductance at a very high q factor right high q factor but very high range of inductance my dear very high range of inductance not focusing on the q factor but very high range of inductance now this can be used but find out by anderson bridge just you focus on this one single line only okay the circuit diagram and all it's not that much important so that's all about the that's all about the what measurement of self inductance next measurement of mutual inductance now. measurement of mutual inductance okay so there are so many bridges my dears so you just remember this name no need to focus on the each bridge circuit diagram no? it, it is impossible to remember all it is 10 to 12 bridges are there it is impossible to remember all the bridges circuit diagram but key points now key points you have to remember so measurement of mutual inductance just you remember the bridge names first one heavy side bridge heavy side bridge two campbell bridge three heavy side 
Campbell Bridge. Four, Carrie Foster Bridge. And Frisian. Had Whaler Bridge. You just want to remember the names, my dear. You just want to remember the names. Nothing more than. Nothing more than this will be asked. You just want to remember the name only. Okay? What are the what are this type? I mean the names of bridges. Only the name of bridges will be asked. So measurement of mutual intents is done by these bridges. Okay. Have a side Campbell, have a side Campbell, Hydweiler, and Carry Foster Bridge. That's all. Okay. And <coughs> Next, you have to note one more thing. Incremental inductance. Incremental inductance is measured by Owens bridge, my dears. Owens bridge. This also very, very important. This line is important, that's all. This line is important. In question, you may see a question like, what is the bridge you to, we used to find the incremental inductance that is a changing inductance okay changing inductance so Owens bridge give you the value of changing inductance so changing inductance can be measured by the Owens bridge is it clear my dears is it clear so next is measurement of capacitance measurement of capacitance so let's see one by one first one Sharon's bridge very very important so in this session my dears only Sharon bridge and the Maxwell bridge are very very important no other bridges no just names are you just want to remember nothing more you have to remember okay so let's see what is Sharon bridge C3 is variable. So R1, C1 parallel, R2, C3 and Rx and Cx. Okay. So this section is the unknown capacitance like unknown inductance now so in that here it is unknown capacitance so here also we are using detectors just we want to know the unknown inductance and i'm mean, sorry unknown capacitance and resistance equation either in the same procedure is there z1 suppose this is said z3 find the impedance of this brand find the impedance of this brand this branch and this brand the impedance of this into the impedance of this will be equal to impedance of this into impedance of this that's all so we don't want the derivation we just want this condition so rx will be equal to Just remember this equation, my dears. Nothing more. Nothing more, nothing less. Just you want to remember this two equation. This is very, very important. This is the very, very important relations. Rx and Lx value. Rx will be R2 by C3 into C1. And Cx will be C3 by R2 into R1. So anyhow, you have to remember this. You find your own trick and you have to remember this. Okay. You have to remember this and this picture also in your mind 
R and C parallel. It is similar to that of Maxwell bridge. In there, the, this R and C also parallel. R2 also there. There it was R3, but here it is C3. That's the only difference. And Rx and Lx was there. Now Rx is the diagonal Cx. So that is the only difference. Just you have to remember the what? Uh, bridge, I mean unknown inductance, unknown resistance and unknown capacitance. R2 by C3 into C1 and okay and Sharon's bridge is used to not the point my dears used to measure low C capacitance comma low C angle comma dissipation factor okay etc so used to measure low C capacitance, low C angle dissipation factor etc. Dissipation factor I will explain in preceding in continuing session. I will explain that okay by separate lecture I will explain. And dissip low C capacitance means what is the difference between a, an ideal capacitance and a low C capacitor? So low C capacitance means my dear, it is not per it means in in practical manner I will say. Suppose a, if it is a good capacitor, even if you uh, pass some I mean voltage to it to store charges what happened it won't get much hot if it is a very good capacitor means it won't heat if it is a lossy capacitor means simply it will dissipate a lot of heat that is a, a simple physical meaning of lossy capacitor and an ideal capacitor so lossy means there will be some losses in the form of heat so a lossy capacitance means a capacitor which emits heat while charging and discharging is called the lossy capacitor so nothing nothing is in nothing in the universe is, is that ideal capacitor now maximum to ideality we can obtain but not exactly so a lossy capacitor means this is the fact so suppose in practical case i will say where you can find this sharin bridge suppose you took a capacitor now simply you took a practical capacitor and you have to find it you can find Suppose you took a wire, wire, electrical cable, no? Suppose a two core cable, you took a two core cable, which means one country is there, one country is there, in between there is an insulation. So there will form a capacitor, but that capacitance it is a lossy capacitance. So that also you can find. That also you can find. So in that cases, you are using this uh, Sharon space. And the important thing you have to note here that this equation as well as where you use it. It is for not ideal capacitance, it is for what? A lossy capacitor like uh, insulation cable and all, right? Or underground cable and all. You can uh, measure its capacitance by using what? Sherman's bridge method. Okay. Another bridge is called. So this is used for measuring the capacitance. Okay. And another bridge is there. And that bridge is D sorty bridge, my dears. D sorty bridge. I will draw the circuit diagram. Okay, so this is circuit diagram of a DSOT bridge. So DSOT bridge is used to find the find the ideal. So this is you have to find. Ideal capacitor or unknown capacitor. Okay, unknown capacitor or unknown capacitor. Okay, so what is the difference between that uh, Sherin's and D S O T? Na D S O T means it is used to find a very good capacitor, not the electrical cable, not the what insulation. No, no, not like that. You are taking a what electrolytic capacitor. You are taking a paper capacitor. No, a pure capacitor, a, a good capacitor. 
not the capacitance formed by some adjustments but the capacitance formed by a real fact no? that is the electrolytic capacitor no paper capacitor mica capacitor you took you take that and find out the unknown capacitance that's all but in the case of Sharon's bridge and all, there you find the lossy capacitance. Lossy capacitance means not directly in the form of capacitor, but adjustment capacitance is formed. Like two conductive medium and in which an insulator. It is what uh, uh, unfortunately formed capacitors, right? Unfortunately formed capacitance. So that type of capacitance you can measure by Sharon's bridge. But this capacitor is not ideal capacitor, a good capacitor or a or a what uh, ideal capacitor. So this can be measured by I will write you should to measure ideal capacitors not the lossy capacitor that's the meaning and here the what balanced condition under balanced condition C2 by C1 will be equal to R3 by R4. That's all. This equation you have to remember. C2 by C1 equal to C2 by C1 equal to R3 by R4. That's all. Only this equation you have to remember. From this C2 you can find simply R3 by R4 into C1. Simply C2 is equal to R3 by R4 into C. That's all. So in that manner you can find the what unknown capacitance. Unknown capacitance. Is it clear, my dears? Is it clear? So that is uh, for the what? For the DSOT bridge. So Sharon bridge as well as DSOT bridge is also for finding the capacitance. One is for low C capacitance. Focus on the one word question here. Not the problems you can't expect. Not you can't expect the problems here, but you can expect the one word line. One liner you can expect here from this. DSOT, where you can use DSOT? In option, ideal capacitor, huh? loss capacitor, inductor, resistor, everything will be there. So, answer is DSOT is for ideal capacitor, that's all. Okay? Is it clear? Can I run this? If you are preparing for university examination, then derivation, everything is very, very important. No, but for competitive examination, no? it is not that much important. Not that, not that much. It is not important. The derivation and all. Okay. Next measurement of frequency. Very very important bridge is here. It is Wayne Bridge. Main bridge. Okay, you just draw the circuit diagram. The circuit diagram, you no know, circuit diagram is not important. The problem is important. So you don't did not need to remember the circuit diagram directly. So this is the vein bridge, the circuit diagram of vein bridge, my dears. So vein bridge is used to find the frequency. Suppose any, no, uh, what? It may be any part of the circuit. It may be any part of the circuit. So if you want to find the frequency of that certain part or the frequency of operation of that certain part, then you can connect by this and you can find the frequency. So you can't directly go for the frequency measurement before that you have to fulfill a very important condition condition to be fulfilled it is nothing but my dear r3 by r4 is equal to 
R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1. R3 by R4 equal to R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1. If this condition is satisfied, then only we can find the frequency f is equal to only only this condition is satisfied this is the condition to be satisfied and after that only you can find the f is equal to 1 by 2 pi root of r1 r2 c1 c2 r1 r2 c1 c2 okay then only you can find the value of r1 r2 c1 c2 you can find the frequency so in question there may be a question like this you have some values of r1 r2 c1 r2 and find the frequency so if you are more enthusiastic then what do you do you directly substitute and find the answer unfortunately that answer will be there in the option you take but one more option will be there cannot be determined <laughs> that you didn't see that you didn't see that you will simply take and you will come the answer will be wrong so before that you have to calculate i mean what uh, check the condition r3 by r4 equal to r1 by r2 equal to c2 by c1 if this condition is satisfied then only you can go for this frequency this only these two things you have to note from this vein bits that's all. that's all. okay okay i will do, i will give you a question for checking that question if r1 equal to r2 equal to r3 equal to r4 equal to 10 kilo ohm and c1 equal to c2 equal to 1 microfarad find the frequency frequency of main bits frequency by main bits by so what will you do you have to check the condition first you have to check the condition for what is r3 by r4 to check r3 by r4 will be equal to what is that r1 by r2 will be equal to no r2 by r1 R3 by R4 is equal to, yes, correct. R3 by R4 is equal to R1 by R2 equal to C plus C2 by C. So check that condition. Is it satisfied? What is R3 by R4? 1. Check R1 by R2. 1 plus something will be there. Na? 1 plus 1 will be there. Na? 1 microfarad and 1 microfarad. So 1 per 1. So it is not. This condition is not satisfied. So answer is not determined not determined so that will be the answer that will be the answer that will be the answer so in examination now in order to check your level the questionnaire may set a question like this and if you are too unlucky <laughs> then you will take the correct answer and you will come with a very happy mood and unfortunately that will be wrong Unfortunately, that will be wrong. It's a clear idea. So, only these things you have to learn from this. That's all. Okay. Next, Wheatstone bridge unbalanced condition. This is also very rare. Wheatstone bridge unbalanced condition. So, normally, what is our Wheatstone bridge?
if the product of these opposite branches are not equal my dears or the r1 by r2 is not equal to r3 by r4 then we can't go for the balancing condition right we can't go for the balancing condition the bridge cannot be balanced so that is called the unbalanced condition so what we, we have to do in unbalanced condition what will be our analysis goes how can we our how can we analyze right how can we analyze so this is dc na so this is dc bridge right so how can we analyze further so under this condition my dear under this condition the galvanometer current ig which is not equal to zero definitely it will not not equal to zero there will be some always some galvanometer current so let be a and will be b then will be c and then will be d so there exists a potential difference always that means vb not equal to vc if it is the bridge is not balanced i mean the under unbalanced condition what happens under unbalanced condition the ig current will not be same i mean will not be zero there will always be some current there will be always some current means vb and vc potential not same if there is no current mean this potential and this potential will be the same then only there will not be any current flow but if there is a current flow means it is an indication that vb is there and vc is there and there will be a potential difference in between that two there will be a potential difference in be that two okay so what our aim is we have to find the galvanometric current ig we have to find ig we have to find ig in question also you can expect like this what is the value of ig if it is not balanced if it is balanced you can directly go for ig equal to zero no issues there but if it is not balanced what will be the value of ig there will be a question like that so for finding the value of ig you no know, for finding the value of ig we have to apply thevenin theorem my dears we have to apply thevenin theorem so what we have to do first we have to apply thevenin resistance first so first thing is we have to find r thevenin we have to find r thevenin so what we have to do for finding r thevenin so remove this galvanometer remove this galvanometer i will draw it again and open circuit the terminals for finding r thevenin what we have to do open circuit the current source and short circuit the voltage source so this is the voltage na in dc bridge na this is the voltage so short circuit the voltage open circuit the current current so this is the current source or current simply so or which or across which we have to find current open circuit to that and short circuit to the voltage short circuit to the voltage so now you have to find the r thevenin what will be r thevenin what will be r thevenin my dears the same thing is equivalent to is equivalent to my dears this suppose this is a this is b this is c and this is c so a and d are shorted right a and d are shorted so we have to find in between this this term so b and c you have to find correct between b and c you have to find okay 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 can i do like this my dear listen B and C. This is A and this is D. That is short circuit. Listen. I took this terminal, my dears. B and C. I took that terminal away. A and C are short circuit means this is short circuit. Correct, na? This is short circuit means this is short circuit means what, my dears? This is short circuit means I can say like this. This is short circuit means this and this get parallel, short circuited. 
parallel short circuited again these two are in parallel these two are in parallel so r2 r4 and parallel r1 r3 in parallel the whole combination will be in series and the other end is c and the other end is b that's all so you have to find the resistance between b and c so i can say that r theorem will be equal to what is that r1 r3 divided by r1 plus r3 plus r2 r4 divided by plus r4 that's all so that is the r theorem in first step over next you have to find what v theorem correct next step is finding v theorem second step is finding v theorem so finding v theorem what we have to do we have to open circuit again this terminal and find the voltage there correct find the voltage there keeping the voltage same this voltage you have to keep there okay so for that let be i1 be the current like this i2 be the current like this mm, i4 be the current like this i3 be the current like this okay so i arbitrarily assume my current direction so what will be v theorem in my ideas so i can say that v theorem will be equal to vb minus vc am i correct v theorem is nothing but this voltage minus that voltage for that so so first step you have to find vb second step you have to find vc if you find these two then you can directly find v theorem okay let's see that so i can say like this mm -hmm. i1 equal to i3 equal to v divided by r1 plus r3 i2 equal to i4 equal to v divided by r2 plus r4 am i correct am i correct there is no current through this so i1 will be same as i3 so this current will be equal to v divided by total resistance r1 plus r3 this current will be i2 and i3 i4 are same so this current will be voltage across this is nothing but v divided by r2 plus r4 that's all so you got the value of i1 i3 and i2 and i4 okay so i can write like i can write like v minus hmm, v minus i1 r1 equal to v b and i also v minus i2 r2 equal to v c so can i run this so so vb minus vc will be equal to v minus i1 r1 minus v plus i2 r2 v and v got cancelled so it will be i2 r2 minus i1 r1 i2 r2 minus i1 r1 so it is vb minus vc substitute i1 and i2 here from this equation i1 and i2 you can substitute from that so it will be purely based on because v is the non parameter r2 and r4 are non quantity but i2 and i1 it is not non so you substitute this equation so it will become uh, v divided by suppose this is let be equation number 1 let be equation number 2 let be equation number 3 okay substitute i1 and i2 in 1 and 2 so what i get my dear what i get in 3 okay substitute i1 and i2 in 3 3 not 1 and 2 in 3 okay so what i get um, i2 is nothing but v divided by r2 plus r4 in 
R2 plus sorry minus I1 V divided by R1 plus R3 into R1 okay okay so that is nothing but what VB minus VC VB minus VC so now you go to the value of V tevinin and now you go to the value of R tevinin so the whole circuit will become rearranged like So symbol find IG now. That's all. That's all it is. So this is not that much important. No? This is not that much important. If it is asked, what we do? If it is asked, what we do? We have to find now. We have to find now. That's why I told you. Can mark the polar term. Is it clear? Is it clear? This is again I am saying it is not that much important, but you have to play, we, you have to learn how to play with that Thevenin circuit. So for that it is very important, no? Okay. It is no need to remember these conditions and all. If, if they are saying the Bayesian bridge is unbalanced, then find the value of Ig in any question. You can follow the procedure same. You can follow the same procedure. First you have to find R Thevenin for that open circuit, short circuit to be uh, voltage source. You find the R Thevenin and again you have to find V Thevenin. So same procedure you can follow that's all. Anyway, it's a very big question. But even the question paper is very, very tough. You can expect, you can expect, that's all. Okay. Okay, my dears. Is it clear? I think this session is too theory, right? <laughs> I know that. I know that. It is slightly boring, also I know, because it is purely theory now. And regarding bridges, bridges, write a question. Write a question. Find the unknown element is at four. And the error. Error in set form. Very, very super question. It's very easy, but you have to remember something. Okay, so what is we have to find? Set one, set two, set three, all are given. So it is again a type of wisdom bridge arrangement. So see this type of question you may expect. Find the unknown element set for my case. So how can we find set form? And error in set forms. Okay. So under balanced condition. What? Correct? Set 1, set 4 is equal to set 2, set 3. So set 4 you have to find. Z4 will be equal to 
set 2 into set 3 divided by set 1. So it will be equal to set 2 into set 4. Oh, sorry, set 2 into set 3. All divided by set 1. Set 1 is what? Okay. How can we find that? Again, the multiplication and division. So, percentage of error can be added. We learned that now. <laughs> percentage of, sorry, percentage of error can be added. In the case of addition or subtraction, magnitude of error can be added or subtracted. That thing you have to learn. That you think, that thing you already learned, right? I have a problem with cold. Okay. So, how can we find that? Multiply these two will become 15 angle 30 correct plus or because angles will be added na? if you multiply two r angle theta forms then corresponding magnitude will be multiplied angles will be added that you know so 40 minus 10 correct 40 plus minus 10 is actually so it will become plus 30 and it will be added 9 so 7 percentage divided by 2 angle 30 plus or minus 2 percentage so it will become 7.5 in r angle theta by r angle theta form the magnitude will be subst I mean divided normally so 15 by 2 divided normally so 7.5 30 minus angle will be subtracted so 30 minus 30 so it will become 0 so 7.5 angle 0 plus or minus angle become again add so 9% so this is the final answer you see how the problem is solved how the problem is solved okay okay is it clear my dears is it clear is it clear so instead of that suppose you are having c1 c2 or r1 l1 anything you just cross and multiply its impedances you will get the answer that's all okay okay if you have any doubt please mention in the comment session okay and we have to improve we have to improve our what viewers level so it's almost i think 420 subscribers are now so we have to expand our family so please share to all if you really like this please share to all of your friends so dedicately dedicately you you will you do this this is that is the guru dakshina you have to give to me only okay because it's free of course now so the only guru dakshina you have to give to me is sharing sharing to your friends and enlarge our family right enlarge our family okay so that's all for today my dears so take care bye